highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. This is TRS Clips. When we say democracy is good, we say that. I want to offer you a contrarian view. You know, you don't run a company on democracy. Mukesh Ambani doesn't say, I'll take all the factory workers and they will vote what to do. You don't run your cricket team on democracy. The captain decides. It is not that all vote will be done, what should be done, what should be done. I mean, you never win if you were democracy. You would not run a military on a democracy. You would not ask all the jawans, you know, what should be our strategy. The military general knows more. So, in all these competitive domains, whether it is industry, whether it is sports, whether it is military, it is not run by democracy, but those who have more knowledge, who have more expertise, they make decisions. But in the case of politics, we are assuming that the average Indian, everybody has equal say. The, the very highly knowledgeable person has as much a, a vote as the person who knows very little. So that's a, and you know, democracy is also you, not something that is a Vedic system. We don't have a democracy. The ancient system of uh, Dharma Shastra and Artha Shastra was not based on democracy. It was based on a king who was a noble king, highly educated king, and he knew what is best for other people. So we have to question whether uh, Indian constitution has worked or not, because Indian constitution also has some issues, I think. You know, a family does not make decisions on a democracy. Some people know more. I mean, some may, some may know more about cooking and what's good for your health and they make decisions for the children. Somebody else may know more about how to make investments and so on. You do not say, that, okay, husband, wife and three kids and you're going to sit and vote and all that. Because people have expertise in something and that expertise ought to be respected. So in, in our tradition also, there, were, uh, there was adhikar, authority in the, in the guru or in an elder person who knew more about that subject matter. And so this idea that 1.4 billion people and based on everybody who's over a certain age, suddenly he has the equal right to everybody else. It, 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 there's no logic to it. And I think the future of democracies in the world is yet to be, it, it's not unclear whether what will happen because United States, which is sort of considered the bastion of democracy today, is in trouble. United, internally, United States is in trouble. There's almost a civil war intellectually going on between the extreme left and the extreme right. Mm. Okay, uh, we will talk about this. We'll expand this thought about yes. America in a separate section. Yes. I actually want to talk a little bit more about democracy. Yes. More from the perspective of, if not democracy, then what? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are listening to this podcast and thinking, dictatorship! He's talking about dictatorship! But I don't know if you're talking about dictatorship. And I also feel that because of the history of the last 100 years, we view dictatorship with a very negative outlook. But historically from an extremely macro human perspective could a one leader rule actually be the solution like in the case of Genghis Khan like in the case of I don't know who else has been one leader who's been epic Singapore okay so I would say I would say first of all a presidential system is better than a parliamentary system for India because in a presidential system you have more stability you vote the elect the president directly not through parliament. Because if right now, if you elect the parliament and then the parliament elects the government, uh, the prime minister, then you know what you have is even a small little party has a lot of leverage, a lot of bargaining power. Because if somebody who's got a few votes can decide between this coalition and that coalition and you have a wobbly system. They don't have security for the full five-year term and they can't make courageous actions. Whereas in a presidential system, uh, little parties don't can't have too much clout because the president is elected directly. And you have stability for the entire term. I would say that, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised. Let me make a prediction. I would not be surprised if Modi becomes president. Uh, Modi be could become president. Re retire as prime minister and become president. Mm. There's nothing that says you can't become president. And as and the, the constitution gives the president enough authority. It has never been used. The Indian constitution gives president a lot of authority. But it has not been used. A strong person who becomes president could make the presidency the center of power and center of decision making. You mean right now? Right now. After PM Modi's term he as could, a PM, yes. he becomes president. There yes. are dormant uh, rules yes. which can be applied. Yes. And then you can kind of shift power from the PM seat to the president seat yes. forever. Yeah, you, not forever during the term of the presidency. All right. So he could he could say, okay, I did uh, comply with this thing that after the age 75 or whatever age, I want you to retire. So I'm no longer PM, but I've become president. He could do that. It, there's nothing that says he couldn't do that. 
Okay. And as president, you have five. You have your term secure. You cannot be through no pardon, uh, no confidence motion kicked out, and all that. And you can run the country. You can make a lot of policies. So this this that's a more stable system. You can elect the right guy, and then you let him be there for a while. You don't kick him out and worry about whether he's coming back in 2024 or not. You just leave him there for 10, 20 years. Because you need to set this country right. It's a 100-year project because we've been ruined, colonized for 1,200 years. Colonization is not just British. It's also Islamic colonization. That's another controversial statement. But Islam also colonized us. They put in a new language. They put in new ways of thinking, new religion, new loyalty to the uh, Middle East countries, not to our, this is not their bhumi, this is not their soil. Uh, so we have been colonized for 1,200 years. And to counter that, we need a century. We need this whole century to recover ourselves. And that requires leaders who are strong and stable long term. Okay, before I let you move forward, I want you to address all the people who are left-leaning, who are listening to this podcast and are about to switch off because they have categorized you as right-leaning. So I don't believe in left or right. Mm. I believe that you have to look at the logic. I mean, I'm left-leaning on some issues, right-leaning on other issues. I believe in free enterprise, which the right-leaning people are supposed to be. But I'm very liberal in terms of rights of human beings. I want everybody to have rights. I want to end, end exploitation. I don't want oligarchy. I, don't, I certainly don't want ultra-rich. I don't want concentration of wealth, concentration of power. So in those senses, I'm not right-wing. I'm more like left-wing. So I don't believe those categories are very clear or very absolute. So these are playlists made especially for you. We've tailor-made learning experiences for you. The TRS Clips.